fire, more heat. You're listening to the boss of the big ball. JP the Ticket. Always spin that explosive fire. Vegas Scoreboard Express. Giving you that. That's right. I'm waking you up this morning with power. JP the Ticket. Vegas Scoreboard Express. I'm back at you live. I'm the boss of the big board. 107.1 FM here in Las Vegas. AM 1400. You guys got to wake up early in the morning with VSX Digital Sports Network. I'm the one bringing you the NFL division previews all weekend. Did it last weekend for the AFC. This weekend we're doing it for the NFC. Got a great show lined up for you today. Got my main man coming in. Brand new VSX co-host and contributor going to be breaking down some NFL and college football for us this season. My main man, Brian Snow from Snowman Multimedia and Snowman in the morning out in the Midwest, bringing you the grease from Indiana. And then in the second segment, I'm going to be talking about that NFC South preview with Scotty Beamham up web. East Coast Sports Investors going to be giving you those baseball picks today as well. And then rounding it out, very special guest, early line value bets with Troy West, Chief Capper at Troy's Money Group. It's going to be an exciting morning. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm ready to get paid. I'm ready to bring the dogs out. So you know what time it is. It's time to grab your bankroll, hit the window, and get ready to beat that line with your boy JB. The ticket when I get back, Brian Snow is going to be on the line, and we're going over that NFC West. So all you Rams fans, you better keep it locked and get the money. You're listening to the boss of the big ball. JP the ticket. Vegas scoreboard is bright. Giving you that grip. Football season, stay in the game with Fubo TV. Over a hundred live channels, including NFL Network, NBA TV, and FS1. Don't miss any of the action. Get seven days free on us at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. Keep it locked with your boy on the ones and twos. Going in on the wheels of steel. You're listening to the boss of the big ball. Ticket back at you live, KSHB AM 1400, and also on that FM dial at 107.1. You got to wake up with me early in the morning to get the money. Boss of the big board, follow me on Instagram at JB the Ticket. Go to my website, VegasScoreboardExpress.com, for those daily deals. So without further ado, he's jumping on the line with me, my main man, Brian Snow, Snowman in the Morning, Snowman Media CEO, and Sports contributor for many, many publications around the nation. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good morning, my friend. I am thrilled to be on with you this morning. I'm glad to have you, man. Again, you guys can check him out at Snowman Multimedia. But again, we're so glad to have you here. He's coming in from Indiana. Very, very astute. So since it's your first time on VSX, just tell the fans a little bit about who you are. And also, just touch on your interesting backstory. As you know, we always give a shout out to the American Cancer Society. Shout out my main man, Ron Third Down Best Bets. He may be coming on a little bit later today. He did have the day off, but he found out about your story. And he wanted to give you a shout out. So again, thanks so much for Ron for that. But again, Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. Tell us a little bit about you and then we'll jump into this NFC West division preview. Go ahead. Well, born and raised in Chicago. Uh, Jim Durham is the person who's had to reach the game. A lot of old games. Uh, Wayne Larrabee, when he was voicing the Bears, got me started. And then I got into sports talk. 
I did my first game off of an idea in 1995 at Chicago State where my friend Kevin checked out a camera. And I said, can you attach a microphone with that? And he said, sure. So attached the microphone and armed with rosters. I did my first game. I did my first sports talk show in 1996 at Chicago State. And uh, the past couple of years, I have beaten blood clots in both my lungs. And I have uh, beaten pancreatic cancer. And because of that, uh, an idea in my head to do a big, fat stadium tour, which is something uh, my beautiful wife, Jody suggested. So I want to raise a ton of money, not just for my family, but for uh, the American Cancer Society and to show people, look, a cancer diagnosis is not a death sentence. This is what I thought it originally was. So now I want to go on tour, see all the stadiums, get my family in shape, and get those who are fighting cancer, no matter what form right now, um, give them some hope. That's what I'm talking about. Brian Snow, my main man. Snowman Multimedia. Snowman in the morning. We're going to be bringing you that show from VSX Digital Sports Networks. Shout out to my main man, Mark Hayes, doing his thing. Tapping in with me this morning. That's right, Mark. JB the Ticket has got him a new host out in the Midwest. You heard his story. Again, you're listening to Brian Snow, host of Snowman in the Morning. You guys are going to be blessed with that this fall on KSHP through VSX Digital Sports Network. So without further ado, let's jump into it, my friend. We have been waiting all week for this. I am so glad to have you here talking about that NFC West. Now, this is a division that a lot of people have picked for a opportunity for teams like the 49ers, the Rams, and possibly the Seahawks to get back into that playoff run. But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to my folks over at Food Boat TV. That's right. This is where you can watch all the games. Stay in touch with every single training camp. We've got the NFL Network, NFL Red Zone Network. You guys are definitely going to want to get on that. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB and you get that 15% off to save yourself money. Again, don't waste time getting cable you're gonna miss games you're gonna have bad information get fubo tv so jumping into it first rotation number 1701 the san francisco 49ers now last year mr irrelevant made himself relevant all day we're talking about mr brock purdy this guy was playing lights out he was bringing the heat got these guys to the nfc championship game but then that injury bug stuck him Throw an elbow, had to get a version of the Tommy John surgery, but he is in camp, still competing with Trey Lance. They've got Sam Darnold out there. Rotation number 1701, the San Francisco 49ers at minus 170. You know, I do not like those expensive money lines. And with the issue with their quarterback situation right now, they still are favored to win this division. But, Brian, I know that you have done your homework and your research. Do you think that minus 170 – is a great bet for those San Francisco 49ers fans. Because in my opinion, this is one of those divisions that is fan heavy with betting because they've had a long history. But nevertheless, we're here to make money. Minus 170. Can the 49ers get it for you to take this division? Go ahead. They're going to win this division by four games. Mr. Irrelevant is very relevant. And what people don't remember about the West Coast offense and a shout to the late great Bill Walsh, the godfather of the West Coast offense, is just predicated on running. And the 49ers, in my opinion, have the meanest running game in the NFL right now. Not to mention, they added Christian McCaffrey. That's what I'm talking about. Christian McCaffrey, one of the few running backs who did get paid last season. Go ahead. Yeah, and the, the most versatile running back that the 49ers have had um, I'll say since Ricky Waters. I was going to say Waters. Roger Craig, Ricky Waters. That's right. That yeah, late Roger 90s, Craig early too. 90s crew. Go ahead. Yep. Roger, Roger Craig, too, because Christian McCaffrey can catch the ball out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Like you got a mobile quarterback like Brock Purdy that can get out, get on the bootleg. The offensive line does their job. And in case things break down and if people don't remember against the Rams in week eight last year, McCaffrey – was supposed to not even be in a play, and he wound up catching a touchdown pass. So McCaffrey is your ultimate is your ultimate weapon. Mm-hmm. You have Debo Samuel, who can also run the football. You have Elijah Mitchell out of uh, Louisiana, who is a beast 
as a running back. He had 900 yards in his rookie season. Right. And then, of course, the passing game includes George the Animal Kittle. Yes. It includes Brandon, it includes Brandon Ayuk. And it's an offense that the last eight games, the last eight games of the season or the five games that Brock Purdy started was averaging 33 points a game. These guys were 13 and four last year, played their hearts out three and two in non-conference play. And as you mentioned, in their last five, five and oh, now at minus 170, you're going to have to lay at least a good 250 on that bet to make it a valuable bet for you to get some cash back. Now, when you talk about it yep. from the offensive side of the ball, let's jump over to that defensive side of the ball because that's where the 49ers really made their money last year. They were stout on defense. They played well in the playoffs when it counted. And they almost got to the Super Bowl. Just Jalen Hurts was a little bit too much for them in that NFC Championship game. But the 49ers defense has been a bright spot over the past few seasons. Give me your thoughts on that, and then we'll break that down for the 170 and move along. Go ahead. The 49ers defense is a monster. And then they added Javon Hargrave from Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. The, you add Javon Hargrave to an already stout defensive line. Plus, you have Javon Kinlaw, who is healthy for the first time in, in his career in camp with no injuries. There you so go. They don't have to integrate him in. They don't have to bring him in slowly. They can turn him loose on that defensive line. And you're talking about five defense. You're talking about five defensive linemen, along with linebacker extraordinaire Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. And of course, they lost some pieces to free agency. But you're talking about a defense that was number one in the NFL three of the last four years. That's what I'm talking about. Year. So you're telling me right now that in this division, they are the true front runner at minus 170. You guys are listening to my main man Brian Snow, Snowman in the morning, VSX Digital Sports contributor. Snowman Multimedia CEO out in Indiana, originally from Chicago, as you heard, telling you the 49ers are stout from top to bottom. Now let's move down the list. Rotation number 1702, the Los Angeles Rams. This is a particular team. You got Sean McVay. He was talking about retiring after the Super Bowl. Then he was talking about possibly doing it again last year. They've got an older aging quarterback that, again, Matt Stafford, we like Matt Stafford, what he was able to do. Georgia national champion. You know I've been a big fan of his. He got out to L.A. He got that Super Bowl ring. But it's all been downhill from there. The running has been atrocious for the Rams. They've lost a lot of their weapons on the receiving core. Jalen Ramsey, that defensive back, he's down in Miami now. Rams to win this division. It is a long dog that I don't think is barking. I think this is a wolf. Plus 850, rotation number 1701, the Los Angeles Rams at plus 850. That is a wolf in my book. Go ahead. It is a wolf because you're talking about a team that's basically rebuilding. And why are you going to trust 35-year-old Matt Stafford to call signals for you when you drafted a two-time national champion in Session Bennett? I said this on my uh, on my preview on my afternoon show. Session Bennett should get the keys to the Rams offense right now. And you should build around them yes. because you're not going to be able to trust Cam Akers to give you not just a thousand yards, but a full season. Right. Cam Akers has not been healthy in two years. Quite Go simply, ahead. who are you going to throw the ball to? <laughs> <laughs> outside of Cooper Cup, outside of Cooper Cup and Ty Higby, <laughs> where's the rest of the receiving team? <laughs> That's why they're plus 850. Let's go ahead and talk about that Rams defense. Now, a lot of people have figured that because that Jalen Ramsey has moved along. He's taken his talents down to Miami a la LeBron many seasons ago. A lot of people are writing these guys off, but they do have some guys in camp. Kobe Durant, Darian Kendrick, Robert Rochelle, Akello Witherspoon. These are guys who've been around the league for a little bit. They have some experience. When you talk about the defensive side of the ball, Jalen Ramsey's gone. You don't really have a strong Aaron Donald. I mean, he basically is on a milk carton. I have no idea what's going on with this guy. What are they going to do on the defensive side of the ball? Go ahead. Aaron Donald and who else? Simply put, this is a long, as you said, this is a long dog. And not even to be, not even to compete in the division. That's a long dog. That's a wolf that's howling, and that is a good. That, that, that's a good number. That's a good prediction for them. So the Rams are in a tank mode right now. Rams are going to need to go to the draft. Moving along, a team that has a little bit more grease 
even though they're third on the rotation list. Talking about those Seattle Seahawks, plus 200. We saw the resurgence of Geno Smith last year. (laughs) NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Got them to a playoff appearance. They came out of nowhere, man. I had no idea that the Seattle Seahawks would be that strong, but they did lose Rashad Penny. So I don't know what they're doing on the offensive side of the ball if they're going to try to rely just on Geno. And you know they've got their guy down there. Oh, my goodness. He is uh, that wide receiver that has, like, the green hair. DK Metcalf. That's right, Metcalf. Might as well be on a milk cart. <laughs> Haven't seen any production out of this guy. When you got that much star power and you got that build – It reminds me of that scene with Jim Brown. Rest in peace, the late, great Jim Brown. When he was sitting at the bar with Al Pacino's character, the coach, and he said these guys are built like gods but break like glass. And I'm talking about this rotation number, 1703, the Seattle Seahawks. Overachieved last year, plus 200 on the money line to compete for this division. And you're talking about a team last year, when you look at their record, 9-8. and So when you take that into consideration – it's a possibility these guys slide down the slope the wrong way. Talk to me a little bit about it, Brian. Go ahead. Rashad Penny is gone. Who's going to run the football? Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's as simple as it gets. Who's going to run the football? Yes. Because under Pete Carroll, Seattle has always had a bell cow running back, Marshawn Lynch, hello, for many years. Rashad Penny, three of the last four years. Now you got this, and you're going to rely on a receiver in D.K. Metcalf, who's a stud of an athlete, don't get it twisted, but he's not a good route runner. No. Geno Smith, you have to be a decisive route runner. And, of course, everyone's running a version of the West Coast offense. Mm -hmm. You know, they tweak it in their own way. I have one question about Seattle. Who's their tight end? That's what I'm saying, man. Who's Who's the the tight end? Who is the tight end? Very good point. We looked at this last season when we know that Pete Carroll got as much out of these guys as possible. But when it came time to perform and get out of that wild card round, they just couldn't do it. And the issue was tight end play. We know that the tight end has become more important, especially in red zone options for a quarterback Mm -hmm. like Geno Smith, who can run, but he needs that block and then he needs that fade off. For the quick dump. They didn't have it last year. Relied a lot on Rashad Penny to get them in the end zone. But like you said, he's gone. So when you look at that running back court that is left over at the Seattle Seahawks, who do you think is going to be able to possibly step up and maybe give them something? Because we know that the running backs have been very unhappy this offseason. Taking meetings, issues with you know the front office across the board. They're not happy with their pay, which means that they most likely you won't be happy with their play as a better Seattle Seahawks at plus 200. Is that wasted money, even though it's in the money line plus? Go ahead. That's wasted money because Seattle will finish no higher than second in the division. Because if you saw the two games against San Francisco, especially the first one in Levi Stadium, they competed for a while, but then San Francisco just opened it up and shredded that Seahawks defense. And then Brock Purdy took over in the game against against Seattle, then they just they just took over. You know, that's a, a, a Seattle's a long line to win the division. At plus two hundred, he is telling you that is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Watch your money. Coming down to the young guns in the NFC West. This is a team that we expected to do a lot more, but JB the ticket warned you that Kyler Murray wasn't that guy. I told you guys that many, many seasons ago when they drafted him, when he came out of Oklahoma. He had a lot of hype, thought he was going to be the second coming of a Russell Wilson type dynamic, undersized quarterback that can see open lanes, but we just haven't seen it from him. A lot of contract disputes, issues, talking about possibly wanting out of town. Sounds like a ticket blow up, but it is an attractive, long dog money line bet. Talking about plus 2,500, there's Arizona Cardinals rotation number 704. You know, JJ Watt is gone, he's retired. What say ye? This team had every piece about three seasons ago, and then every single piece fell off. They didn't use the right glue. She used Elmer School glue, got a little bit wet, and then dried and cracked in the desert. But the Arizona Cardinals at plus 2,500. This looks like a three-win team to me. Go ahead. Three if, not, three if lucky. 
<laughs> You're talking about a quarterback that is disgruntled. He got paid. Listen, Kyler Murray got paid and is still disgruntled. What is wrong with that picture? Simply put. What's wrong with that picture? If your quarterback is not happy, then what say ye about the rest about the rest of the team? My other two questions about mm-hmm. this Arizona offense. One, where's the offensive line? And two, most importantly, we talked about this entire segment, who's going to run the football? Right, who is going to run the football? That's an issue across the league. Who is going to run the football? Guys are not happy at that position. Talking about these Arizona Cardinals last year, they won four games. Again, I don't think that they get to the fourth game this year. Four and 13 overall last year. That costed you money across the board. No value there. It went 0-5 for their last five games of the season. And you talk about, again, Kyler Murray possibly trying to force himself out on a trade. But we've seen a lot of these smaller quarterbacks, Kyler Murray, Tua Tagovailoa. And let's not forget Kyler's injury pro now. He has had a few injuries. And when you look at it from that perspective, disgruntled, injured, you went 4-13 and last year. This is a play that you don't want to make. It's attractive at plus 2,500, but we're not here to tell you to lose money. Brian Snow, Snowman in the Morning, thank you so much for stopping by the big board. Going to take a short commercial break. Any shout-outs, your final prediction for this division? I know you're probably going to stick with those San Francisco 49ers, still stout from top to bottom, but go ahead. Thank you so much. It's all it's all about the 49ers in San Francisco. They'll be 13 and 4 again, maybe 14 and 3. The only question with San Francisco, do they get the two seed or do they get the one seed? I have the 49ers win this division and just like they did in the second half of last year, they will pull away. And a shout to my beautiful wife Jody, my baby boy Dakota, who is celebrating a birthday. This, this coming week. Uh, my baby girl Cheyenne, my daughter Sonia, and all of my grandchildren. I love you. I love y'all. And JB, shout to you and the folks at the BSX Digital Network, the folks in Las Vegas. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to bring the heat with Snowman in the morning to you this fall. You know what time it is. Time to wake up early in the morning with my main man, Brian Snow. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Snowman in the morning is going to be waking you up. During the week, JP is going to be bringing the heat on the weekend, and we can't wait to have you, Brian. So when we get back from this short commercial break, I'm bringing him up, Scotty. Beam him up, Webb, from the East Coast Sports Investors. We're going to be talking football, though. The NFC South last year was one of the worst divisions in football. A team with a losing record, Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Buccaneers got in the playoffs, but there's no more Tom Brady, and there's still losses across the board. Three teams besides the Buccaneers. All losing records. That means this division was losers, but Scotty's going to tell you who's going to win it when I get back from this short commercial break. So you keep it locked. Grab your bankroll. Let's get some money. You're listening to the boss of the big board, JP the Ticket. This football season, stay in the game with Fubo TV. Over 100 live channels, including NFL Network, NBA TV, and FS1. Don't miss any of the action. Get seven days free on us at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. Shopping is always easy with the Radio Shopping Show. Whether it's shopping during any one of our live shows right here on AM 1400 or listening live on the KSHP app, you can always call in at 702-221-7283 to pick up great deals with your favorite host. Or shop 24-7 at KSHP.com. Go to KSHP.com and select Shopper's Guide to browse hundreds of businesses featured on the show. Place your order online and we'll have it shipped right to your front door. With so many possibilities, it's hard not to shop. JP the Ticket Vegas Scoreboard Express back at you live here. 107.1 FM and AM 1400 is where you find me each and every Saturday and Sunday. You got to wake up early in the morning with the boss of the big board, JB the You're Ticket. And I've got my main man back board. on the line with me here to give you those baseball picks in addition to his preview for the NFC South. Scotty, beam him up, Web, East Coast Sports Investors, and MLB Daily.com. Good morning to you, Scotty. How you doing? Hey, JP, I'm doing great, brother. It's a Sunday, and uh, what, you got the trade deadline, you got football coming up. What, can, what else could be better? Nowhere better to be than the big board. And again, you guys can lock it in each and every Saturday morning, KSHP, live here in Vegas, 107.1 on the FM dial, AM 1400. 
on the other side. And of course, VSX Digital Sports Network and my website, VegasScoreboardExpress.com. So again, like you mentioned, football season is right around the corner. Got that Hall of Fame game on August 3rd, Browns versus Jets. But today we're talking about these division opportunities and right now going into that nfc south but my main man scotty beam him up web follow him over on the bird or the x whatever they want to call it at webby 20 mlb so scotty last year your division down in tampa bay where you're at man this was the worst division in nfl every single team had a losing record their team that went to the wild card game tom brady's tampa bay buccaneers absolutely got molly whopped and wiped out eight and nine got them to the playoffs and down the board, 7-10 and 10 across it. So this is one of those divisions, like I said, if value is to be found, the teams have to play. So you can even go with the loser and possibly make some money. So let's jump into it. Rotation number 1601. That's 1601, the New Orleans Saints. Now they picked up our castaway, Derek Carr. He's the new quarterback. I think they've even got John Gruden down there working with the quarterbacks to help implement some of that offense. So, again, a lot of opportunities in New Orleans at plus 125. The fans down in the Big Easy think that this could be their year, that they improve that record. Nowhere to go but up. But what say you, Scotty? You're down in the region, and you're hearing a lot more than me. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I think when you start looking at divisions, you want to, you know, the divisions and teams play based off quarterback play. And the truth of the matter is you got to start, you know, the best way to look at a division is start to look at, all the quarterbacks, and then start ranking them, right? So, mm-hmm. so you've got you've got New Orleans has Derek Carr, Tampa Bay has Baker Mayfield, Atlanta's got Derek Ritter, and you know Carolina's got a new quarterback in, in Bryce Young. So, so if you're ranking those top those four teams, I don't think there's any way you can sit there and go Derek Carr's not the best quarterback in this division. Right. Um, so, so I think that sets them up, sets New Orleans apart. Uh, number one. Number two, I think the other part of this that is, um, I don't know if people really know or have looked at it yet, but the easiest schedule in the NFL last year was the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and we saw what they did. They just steamrolled everybody. Right. Well, the the easiest schedule in the NFL this season belongs to the New Orleans Saints. So I, I think the Saints, the Saints with Derek Carr, with the season that they have in terms of um, in terms of uh, the schedule, is sets up really nice for them. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, they, they don't have to go out there and be a barn-busting team. But one of the surprising things I think that you might find here is that they have a good defense. And if, and if they can manage the environment right, you know, Derek Carr has led teams to the playoffs before. I don't think he can't do it again. So, so... I I would be very surprised if you see a team go eight and nine in this division and win it this year. I, I think that the New Orleans Saints actually go over their win total and they they could be in it and they could actually win this with ten eleven wins. Scotty beam him up, Webb, giving you the grease on the New Orleans Saints, telling you that this team goes as Derek Carr goes, moving right along on this list. Rotation number sixteen oh two, the Kara. Line of Panthers, like you said, they've got a brand-new rookie quarterback. Have had quite of a quarterback round robin. But they got rid of all their quality players, man. They got rid of Christian McCaffrey. The round robin at quarterback continues, but they think they've got their guy. So as you were talking about the Carolina Panthers, I'm just looking at a lot of the schedules here. It looks like the Carolina Panthers also have a pretty soft schedule starting off the season at the Atlanta Falcons. So, again, when you talk about a team – that starts the season in the division, okay, week one, it's very important to look at that as a possibility of whoever wins that first game of the season being a division game, maintaining some standings. And the Carolina Panthers right now at plus 350 on the money line, rotation number 1602. What do you think about those Panthers? Go ahead. Well, I think that they're a good defense. You know, I think they're a good defensive team. Here's, here, and, they, and, and again, you mentioned it. They have a very favorable schedule. They have the fourth easiest wow. schedule in the NFL. So, so when you start to think about what they have, though, they're going to be extremely dependent upon Bryce Young. Now, the reason I say that is this is a team that's going to come in with a new, new starting quarterback. 
a new running back number one, a new number running back, our wide receiver number one, a new wide receiver number two, and a new tight end. So every one of the positional players are going to be brand new. So you would want to play this team early. So I, I think that probably favors Atlanta in this particular spot. The other, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting here is this team was number one in fumble luck. They were number one in field goal luck, and they were number one in yards after catch for completion last season. So those are all favorable things for them that not necessarily repeatable. Right. So that that's something where I think that they get set back a little bit this year. Well, they picked up Adam Thielen. And again, we've been talking a lot about the transition from running backs being an integral piece of offenses to now tight ends being an integral piece. And when you talk about that rookie, Bryce Young, he needs some veteran help, but he has it in the form of a tight end. They picked up Adam Thielen from the Vikings. They've got DJ Chark who can get down the field. So I'm thinking that maybe they try to take it slow. They've got a pretty good runner in Miles Sanders. The offense is not bad, but like you said, it's a lot of pieces that haven't played together to gel. Looking at their first week schedule, the Carolina Panthers start off again with the Atlanta Falcons. The very next game, again, another division game versus New Orleans. They take it out west to Seattle, and then they bring it back in week four with Minnesota. So again, Adam Thielen sees his old team week four. I think there's some opportunity here for these guys to maybe win one or two games early on. And the only reason why I say that about the Carolina Panthers only winning one or two of these early games is because of the lack of chemistry. And at plus 350 to win this division, they're going to have to have a marked improvement from what they did last year. Talking about these Carolina Panthers moving right along on that list. The Atlanta Falcons, again, this is a division that plays itself a lot in the early regular season. Atlanta, rotation number 1603 at plus 200. You said you got Desmond Ritter at quarterback. You had a lot of changes last year. They had Marcus Mariota come out there and stink it up. They tried to be competitive. They tried to maintain some value, but again, they ended up at 7 and 10. So at the bottom of their division, based on point totals, I think this is another opportunity for a team like the Atlanta Falcons to, again, improve. Again, it doesn't take much to win this division, people. I mean, this was the worst division in football. Okay. And they're relying on rookies at key positions on many of these teams. But the Atlanta Falcons, when you talk about it from that offensive side of the ball, do you think Desmond Ritter is going to be a long-term starter in the NFL? I'm a little confused on that. Go ahead. Well, between Mariota and between Ritter, this team was the worst team in Uh, I know Ritter only started four games or whatever last season, but but th- this is a weird team because th- this is the best rushing team in the NFL. And they right. out, you know they had a they had a thousand yard rusher last year, and then they spent their first round draft pick picking Bijan Robinson. So they doubled down basically on the rushing game. You know when it comes to how teams win in the NFL these days, they don't win running the football. They they salt games away by by that, and they they, they can hold the ball to keep the other team from you know from from scoring. But roster construction wise, they got forty two percent of their payroll spent on dead cap, meaning Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Dante Fowler, and Deion Jones. So. This, this team was, was coached extremely well last season. So one of the things I think is kind of interesting here is their defense, they, they ranked 31st on, on surpassing defense in terms of EPA per attempt, 30th in success rate, and 30th on third down conversions. So they, they, they really... They, they really schemed and masked their way to where they ended up last year. And I think, and I think that rushing attack, you know, held the ball for them and kept them in games. One of the, one of the things that I found that was very interesting is, is that of all the teams in all, all the NFL, there was only two teams, Kansas City and Buffalo, that were in more games than the Atlanta Falcons. They only lost two games by more than one score. Right. So, so I thought I thought that was amazing for a team that really was, you know, on paper they're 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 paper tigers. So, so I find this I find this team kind of hard to handicap, and I think they're a 500 kind of team. Um, so, so when it comes to you know, are they better than Carolina? Probably. Are they as good as New Orleans? I don't think so. So, so I, I think there's still 
progression that they need to make on the offensive side of the ball before we can start saying, hey, this team has a legitimate chance to do anything. Talking about my man, Scotty, beam him up web, MLBDaily.com, but also a football expert, <laughs> NFC South. Now we're going to move into your hometown, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then when we get back from this short Buccaneers break, we're going to give you the baseball picks and then let you get on your day. But again, Buccaneers, they were the division champs last year, but they are at the bottom of the barrel in this division. Coming into this season, rotation number 1604, Tampa Bay, the Bucks at plus 800. They've got Baker Mayfield at quarterback. They still have Mike Evans, and they're trying to make a name and maintain some sort of relevance in the NFL. I mean, Tom Brady came through for two years, got him a championship, but now they're starting with Baker Mayfield, who we know has had a ton of problems in the start of his career. He's already been bounced around. Browns, Rams, Carolina. Now he's down in Tampa Bay, projected to be the starter because of previous experience. What do you think is going on with your hometown Buccaneers? They are projected to win five games this year on the big board here at VSX from our analysis. But your thoughts on it. Go ahead. Well, first of all, I would have to must say that, uh, you know, a lot of people forget what Brady brought to the, the, the Buccaneers. And, and some of it was, you know, obviously his pedigree and the different things in the past that he's done. But he got rid of the ball within 2.3 seconds, and no one in the NFL has ever done that more than he did last season. He did that more than 650 times. Baker Mayfield is the guy that holds on to the ball. So so one of the problems they run into is they have a poor offensive line, but they gets a little bit healthier this year with Tristan Wirfs coming back and, and from injury, and you get the center back, J- Jansen. So... So I like the idea that this team is being undervalued, to be honest. I think the offensive line is going to be a little bit better. I think that Mayfield will be a little bit serviceable. I mean, he's led teams to the playoffs before. It's not like he hasn't done that. He'll be a serviceable to go play. And I expect improvement on the defense because of, of health. And plus, they, they drafted first-round pick Elijah Clancy from Pittsburgh. I think he'll be pretty good. I think the Bucks are being overlooked and undervalued. I think I think this team goes well over the five win mark. That's what I'm talking about, Scotty. Beam him up, Web from MLBDaily.com. Just got a message from my guy coming in next for the week one previews, the dog bets that are going to get you paid. And again, you guys are going to want to stay tuned for that. So, Scotty, I'm going to actually get you out of here a little bit early. Throw some baseball picks at me today. Some teams that fans should be looking for. And then we will get into it next week with the full baseball segment. But I want to thank you so much for that NFC South breakdown. Very, very good information. But again, you are the baseball expert. So just what are some of the teams that they should look at today to put some cash in their pocket? Again, thank you so much for stopping by that big board. Yeah, well, I was I was looking at uh, some of the division winners with some of the different things that's going on. And I, I found a couple of things that you, you might find a little bit interesting here. One, one of them is the Chicago Cubs. I think the Chicago Cubs are a team that, that's on the rise. I, I get it. They've won eight straight games. But, again, that's a, a division where the Brewers aren't doing a whole lot. The Reds, the Reds are faltering. So, so I think you can get some value on the Brewers to make the playoffs and or even win the Central. They're plus 475, for example. To win the to win the American or National League Central there, and the other one, the other one that I thought was was uh, a good value was the Toronto Blue Jays. You know the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays played uh, uh, the Angels today, and they got favorable matchup there, so they should win that game. And then they play Baltimore right after that with four games. So if they can if they can win those games against Baltimore too, then they they are already catching in, in the top of division league. Leaders, they're plus 330 to win the American League East. And I think that at the end of this, I think you're going to see Toronto be the team that, that, that actually captures the American League's crown. That's what I'm talking about. Scotty, beam him up, Web East Coast Sports Investors, giving you that NFC South and those Major League Baseball division picks as well. He's doubling it up to put that cash in your pocket. Any final shout outs before I let you go, Scotty? And then we get into this week one early dog bets. Yes, that's right. I'm bringing it to you early here with my main man, Troy West from Troy's Money Group, but right now saying goodbye for now to Scotty Beam Him Up Web. Go ahead with those shout outs. 
Yeah, hey, I just want to say, hey, I fish Jeff, Jeff Dawson over at East Coast Sports. I mean, the guy, the guy is working really hard, doing everything he can to, to make things happen. That's number one. And then number two, I would just say keep an eye on things because, you know, Major League Baseball is um, uh, just starting to make these Major League State deadlines happen. The, the deadline's Tuesday, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, and, and we'll uh, – See who else gets moved, you know, whether Verlander, Montgomery, some of these other guys, Arenado, all these guys are selling selling players, so we'll see how it goes. Yep, we saw Max Scherzer yesterday get traded away from the New York Mets to the Texas Rangers. Shout out my main man, VJ Husky, Fox Sports Radio, Martin and VJ Host. You can check them out on Fox Sports Radio 4-7. to 7. On Saturday evenings, they provide my afternoon grease when I'm hanging out. But he was super excited about that Texas Rangers trade. We'll see how it turns out for him. Scotty, thank you so much for stopping by the big board today. When I get back from this short commercial break, guys, Troy West, Troy's Money Group, top handicapper here in Las Vegas, giving you those daily winners. And we're going to be giving you some early dog picks for Week 1 NFL. Stay tuned. Let's grab your bankroll and get some money. You're listening to the boss of the big board. VegasScoreboardExpress.com. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. The Klondike Casino is a friendly local spot that features their signature restaurant, the Klondike Grill, serving up fresh food fast. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner just off the 95 Freeway on Sunset Road in Henderson. You will find the Klondike Casino, featuring all your favorite games from the Strip in the comfort of a neighborhood casino. You can place a bet at their full-service sports book, or start your day with a breakfast plate that comes with your choice of potato and toast. Or check us out for lunch or dinner and try one of our many sandwiches, like the popular beer-battered fish sandwich or the Philly cheesesteak. Check out the full menu at Klondike Sunset. Sunset.com. You're tuned into the BSX Digital Sports Network. If you need help, hang up and then dial the operator. You're listening to the boss of the big bar. If you have money, you can buy in. JP the tech ass. More fire, more heat. Vegas Scoreboard Express. Giving you that grease. That's right, if you got money, you can get anything, and if you got the grease. You can make that grind go smooth. JP, the ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express, back at you live here. 107.1 FM on your radio dial. I told you, I'm bringing so much heat, I'm burning up the lines, man. You're going to hear that static. It don't matter, but you're going to still get the grease. And right now, I got somebody with wave grease in his hands to put that money in your pocket. Talking to my main man, Troy West, Troy's Money Group. Follow him on Instagram at It's Troy West. Troy, thank you so much for stopping by, man. You're one of the top handicappers in the nation, and you have been dropping grease all over the Internet for many, many years. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. It is an honor to have you on the big board talking about these week one dog plays that can get you paid, and you guys can make these bets over at BetUS.com. Use offer code VSX125. I'm giving you a 125% bonus on your initial deposit. So, again, Troy, good morning. How are you? Hey, guys, doing great. Appreciate you guys having me. And, boy, we're, what, 30 days away or so from week one? Couldn't be more excited for NFL, man. It's finally here. We're right around the corner now, JB. I'm pumped. I'm telling you, man, it is one of those seasons where I'm looking at a lot of opportunity to make money. We know that the running back position has its problems. We know that a lot of the owners are just kind of like aloof. We haven't seen a lot of off-field issues with players, some no-name guys getting in trouble. But when you look at the rosters, core changes, players moving around. I mean, seeing Jalen Ramsey going back from the NFC to the AFC, teams like the Miami Dolphins trying to figure that out, 
from his perspective, now him being injured. So you're talking about injuries early. You got Joe Burrow out in Cincinnati. He's injured early. Calf strain, having some problems with that. But it is going to be an exciting early season. I mean, the money lines are there, man. I'm looking across the board right now for week one, seeing quite a few games in that plus 200 or above. And those are the dogs that we're talking about. And again, you guys are listening to JB the Ticket and Vegas Scoreboard Express. Follow me over on Instagram at JB the Ticket. Follow the show on VegasScoreboardExpress.com. So, Troy, let's get into it. Again, Troy West from Troy's Money Group. Follow him on Instagram at It's Troy West. So those first week dogs, I'll go ahead and let you tell me the teams. I'll bring up those rotation numbers. Go ahead. You bet. You know, the one that I'm really looking at right now is the Houston Texans. You know, they're getting 10, 10 and a half points going into Baltimore week one. Look, people probably scratching their heads going, really, the Texans? But look, this is a new regime, new era under D'Amico Ryan. I think he's going to be more than amped up for this football game. You've got C.J. Stroud era beginning. I think he's going to have a solid rookie season. You got guys like Lamar Jackson, who God, who has taken a snap and God knows how long. Odell Beckham, who hasn't taken a snap and God knows how long. Ten points is a lot of points in the NFL, JB. A lot of points. I, I like the Houston Texans to go in there and compete. I think that's going to be a, a game decided by three or four. Ten's a lot of points in the NFL. I just think the Houston Texans are going to come in with new life this year, and we just don't know what to expect from the Baltimore Ravens. We don't know what you're going to get from Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham. The defense was banged up. The running games, you know, Dobbins was banged up last year. You talk about injuries. Baltimore is the king of injuries, right? And I just don't think they're going to come out in week one and put a hurting on anybody. So I like the Texans getting 10 in that first week. Telling you in week one, take rotation number 455, the Houston Texans at plus 10. Right now, that bet is at plus 9.5. You can get that bet over at BetUS. Baltimore Ravens rotation number 456. I don't think that's going to be a sequence that's going to get you paid. You're rocking with Troy West, Troy's Money Group. Follow him over on Instagram at it's Troy West. He's telling you right now, take those Houston Texans at rotation number 455. On that week one list, going down that list again, where do you see the extra money for us, Troy? Go ahead. Yeah, you know, another one I heard you talk about earlier, I, I like Tampa Bay. You know, they're on the road at Minnesota. You're getting six and a half points. Um, you know, if you're if you're able to and buy that baby up to seven, seven and a half where you're getting over a touchdown, look, I get it. They lost Tom Brady. They lost the leadership. They did not play well last year at all. But the defense brings back most of their guys. They, you know, they bring back a huge nucleus of guys on that defense that was outstanding mm-hmm. last year. I think they'll be better again this year. And, and the quarterback position, you know, if they go Kyle Trask or they go Baker Mayfield, I think that's very serviceable. I think the Bucks are going to be a ground-and-pound run team this year. I think you're going to see a lot of run, running up the football. And, and the Buccaneers are just a good, solid, well-coached football team. They're on the road. I get it. But six and a half is a lot of points in the NFL. Kirk Cousins, you never know what you're getting from him. You've got the Dalvin Cook drama over in Minnesota. Is he going back? Is he not? If he's not, who's really running the football for the Vikings this year? They lose Adam Thielen, as you mentioned. I just don't think Minnesota's worthy of being a six and a half point favorite at home in week one. So I'm going to take the dog with the bucks and I'm going to take six and a half. And, and if I can, I'm going to buy a point and get that baby up to seven and a half. That's a low price. Very good value there. He's talking about rotation number in week one of NFL action, not the preseason, the regular season. 461, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers telling you early, take them for that plus six and a half on the road at Minnesota, who is rotation number 462. Going down the list, we got about five minutes left, Troy. We'll give it about two more minutes. What are some other teams that you see in that week one? And again, thank you so much for giving our fans this early grease. I definitely going to want to have you on during the season as a contributor. The way you're breaking things down, again, you guys got to follow him on Instagram. He's always giving away free plays and free picks that are hitting at 70%. Now, you know, you know I'm a numbers guy, Troy. You've earned your spot here, man. I hope you continue to bring the grease to the hot seat. But give me some more teams at this week one starter. This is when you want to start making some of those early bets and start working on that bankroll. Go ahead. Absolutely. I like Carolina a lot. I heard you talk about this team. You know, Carolina, I think they're going to be vastly improved this year. You got the quarterback position fixed up a little bit with Bryce Young. They're going to have a great run game with Miles Sanders. I love that pickup. Adam Thielen, the veteran receiver, DJ Chark. They, they, this offense is going to be vastly improved this year. And Carolina plays hard-nosed 
physical defense. They're on the road. They're going into Atlanta. Yes, they're getting three. I'd buy the hook, get that baby up to three and a half. Carolina's defense is solid. And we just don't know what we're getting from Atlanta again. You know, this is a team that I think has one of the worst quarterbacks in the league with Desmond Ritter. Not a fan of Ritter. I know you mentioned it earlier. I love the pickup of B. John Robinson. But another thing with Robinson is how many carries are they really going to give this guy in week one? I don't think they're going to overload him too much in week one. I like Carolina to go in there, maybe steal the game outright. But I love getting three, three and a half points if I'm going to buy the hook there. I think that's going to be a competitive football game decided by three points. I like Carolina on the road to get the job done. Telling you early on in the season, rotation number 453, the Carolina Panthers telling you to put them on your ticket. Take them at plus three. Buy the hook up. If you can get a quarter point to get that half, it's smart. And then he's telling you. This could be one of those money line dogs. You know we love those money line dogs here at VSX at plus 140. Going up against their division rivals, which I always like divisional round week one games. You get both teams playing hard, and typically that dog is where the value is to be made to beat those Atlanta Falcons. Rotation number 454 on September the 10th, which is week one startup for this season. Thank you so much, Troy, for stopping by the big board. That was quick, man. That's what I said. Troy doesn't waste time. He gets on. He Hell gets to the yeah, bankroll, gets to the window, and he beats the line. One of the best handicappers in the nation. Very well known here in Las Vegas. We're so proud and glad to have him here on the show. VSX Digital Sports Network and VegasScoreboardExpress.com. So, Troy, any final shout-outs? I'll let you get up out of here, and then I'm going to finish out the show. Thank you so much. You guys be sure to follow Troy over at It's Troy West and all of your podcasts and radio apps. Be sure to get the replay of this show. Search for Vegas School Board Express Live or JB the Ticket. Go ahead, Troy. Yo, no, thanks for having me, guys. You know, if you come to our website, TroyWins.com, or our Instagram at It's Troy West, real tickets, real people, real handicappers. You get us on the phone. There's there's no beating around the bush. There's no hiding. We're real people. We're here. Real money, real tickets, JB. Come take a look. Love helping people make a lot of money, and we're extremely affordable. So appreciate you guys having me and, and looking forward to a great NFL season. That's what I'm talking about. Got my main man, Troy West, dropping grease for you for that week one NFL dog picks. So you guys know that's it. Want to give a shout out to Terrence Crawford last night, winning the undisputed welterweight championship. He beat Errol Spence in a TKO. I think it was like round nine. So, again, congratulations to him and his team for putting that cash in your pocket as the underdog. So, again, that's the show today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the big board. If and when you ever want to bet, go over to BetUS.com. Use offer code VSX125. Get that 125% bonus. And if you have some issues with gambling, be sure not to do that and get some help. And 21 and over in the usa so again thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this weekend for the nfc division round previews we gave you the grease to put the cash in your pocket want to give a big shout out and thanks for the guys that came on this weekend jeff dawson ceo of the east coast sports investors john ryan predictive sports playbook of course my main man ron third down best bets brian snow from snowman in the morning scotty beam him up web from the east coast sports investors and mlb daily and again another one of our newcomers who brought the heat Troy West. So it's time to grab your bankroll, guys. Get the money. You're listening to the boss of the.